All right. This looks like you can see my slides. Thanks for the welcome in the chat, Daniel. Um, good. Let's let's get to start it. I'm talking about the sensor package. Um, tough act to follow. <laughs> and um, usually, so survival analysis is applied to data from situations like that, and I kind of assume that this is what um, <clears throat> most people here are working with. And when I talk to more general audiences, I try to get across what sensor data is and to please use survival analysis for it. But I don't think I need to do that here. Uh, so instead, I'm going to bring a little reminder that not all sensor data are variations of time to death. Um, and I came across one of my favorite examples in a previous job at a data science consultancy where uh, one of my colleagues chatted to me about his latest project. And it was a newspaper company that wanted to know how many copies they should deliver to the various outlets. And sort of he was musing that if there were copies left at the end of the day, um, they would know how many were taken. And if there were none left, they would still know how many were taken, but they wouldn't actually know how many more could have, would have been taken if they hadn't run out. So in that case, the it's the observation of the demand for the newspaper that is censored and not the time that's censored. And um, with us a little reminder of the wide applicability of censored data and survival analysis, let's get to why I'm here today. Because um, I'd like to let you know that we're extending support for survival analysis in tidy models. If you're not quite sure what tidy models is, it's a framework um, and a collection of packages or packages for modeling and machine learning, which uses uh, tidy first principles. So um, <clears throat> Max and Julia just gave a keynote on tiny models at our studio conf and sort of talked about what they mean with saying that tidy models should make your modeling effective, safe, and ergonomic. Um, and if you want to know more about that, I suggest watching that. The videos are out. Sort of the part that matters most here for us um, is that tiny models also gives you a consistent interface to various models. Um, you're probably well aware of that R has an abundance of riches in different types of models, also survival models. And it comes with nearly similar abundance of riches in interfaces sometimes. And um, while the first is great, the second can be a little challenging if you're trying to focus on your modeling problem and not want to spend your cognitive energy on looking at what that particular argument for that package and that function was called. Um, <clears throat> so that's kind of the place where we started with um, extending that support for survival analysis, the models, the models themselves. And that part in the tiny models framework is sort of covered and captured by the person to package in general. That is designed to give you consistency, both in how you specify and fit models um, and how you predict and what you get back. So censored, is a parsnip extension package specifically for survival models. And I'll be talking here about how these design principles are playing out for survival models. So the first uh, part, specify and fit. Um, let's start out with a quick reminder of how you specify models in parsnip, because you need three things. The model type, so in my example here, that's a random forest. And then the second part you need is a computational engine. What, what do you use to fit that model? Um, in our case here, it's the Ranger package. It often is another R package, but it can also be a tool outside of R, like TensorFlow and Keras or um, Stan for Bayesian models. And the third element in a person model specification is the mode. So here I set that to regression. You could also use a random forest for a classification problem. And these three elements are what makes model specification. And you will encounter these um, in censored as well. So if you sort of already know that pattern, then that will be very familiar. So what's different? Uh, or what were the additions that we made for survival models? For one, we have a new model type for proportional hazards models. And a new mode for censored regression to distinguish that from quote unquote regular regression problems. 
in the third part, you may guess it, um, are new engines. So um, for existing models, but for that new mode, but this is on a little more. Um, <clears throat> and they cover parametric models, semi-parametric models, and tree-based models. And the last bit to mention sort of in the specification realm of this um, is that we have a formula interface for all the models that allows you to specify stratification where it makes sense. Um, <clears throat> and with that, let's pull out some data. It is not hospital data, but it's um, dolphins and whales living in captivity in the US. It is adapted from a Tidy Tuesday data set from 2018. And sort of the response here is the age of the dolphin and the event variable tells you whether they are still alive or not. We have some other um, Predictors are explanatory variables, the species, the sex, um, how many times it was transferred between any of the facilities that it was kept at, the animal, um, and whether it was born in captivity. And let's start fitting. So as you can see that syntax in action, let's take the new model, proportional hazards. Um, that's sort of the, the baseline that we start with. Um, we're going to set the engine to using the survival package. And then we set the mode, which is that new sensor regression mode. And these three elements give you the specification. This isn't a fitted model yet. That's what you do with the fit function, um, where you give the object data set and the formula specification. So like your serve object is the response, and then we use species section transfers. And if you want to stratify this model, you can add that to the formula. Um, that's how the survival package then uses it. Um, you add a strata term for born in captivity. And sort of this was the, the whole Japan. And if this looks a little long to you, because you're used to just using the survival package directly, then, then yes, it is. It's a little bit more verbose. So if you use survival directly, you need the Cox pH function, um, the formula, and the data, and you're good to go. And that's great. Um, and if you're happy with that, you obviously have no need for censored. Um, the idea of censored is making it a little easier going from one model to another model to another model type. Um, so let's switch from proportional has this model to a penalized version of this model. And I've just sort of like moved all of the code to the left. So we have that for the survival package. And if you want to fit a penalized um, proportional hazards model, you can do that with the glimnet package. But that's going to go a little different, um, obviously, since I picked it as an example. So um, the biggest difference probably in terms of syntax here is that the Glimnet package does not have a formula interface, but rather a matrix interface. So you need to prepare your data um, as a matrix for the predictors. Um, it's not enough to just pull out the columns of your data frame. Um, there are some <clears throat> um, nominal variables in there, and those need to be turned, to, turned into dummy variables. I do that with model matrix here, so that's a little bit of extra work. Um, and the response is that serve object. Obviously, if there's no formula interface, if you want to stratify that, you need to put it somewhere else. And Blumna's choice was to stratify the response with the stratify serve function from Blumnet. And if you've done that to your response, then you're good to go and take it to the Blumnet function, give it um, your data in those two objects, set the family to Cox, and set the penalty parameter lambda here. That's all doable, but obviously it's, it looks a little different and it's a little bit of different work. And if you have to um, <clears throat> prepare your data differently for different models, that's maybe an overhead you're not too keen to do because it distracts you from thinking about stuff that you might find more interesting. Um, and so that's one of the things that we've made easier, in my opinion. So when you take the piece of code that I showed you initially about how to fit that and censored. That's what I have on the left. And then it's basically the same thing on the right. But the main thing that changes is that line set engine. So instead of 
choosing the survival package to fit the proportional hazards model, we're choosing the GlimNet package on the right. The only other difference is setting the penalty parameter for um, GlimNet, and it's just called penalty, and you don't have to remember which Greek letter is the right one here. Um, the rest is the same, so the mode is the same. And also, this sort of comes along pretty boring and unassuming, but I'm quite happy that it works, um, that you can use a formula interface to specify that model, um, and you do not have to prepare the data in a different way. And um, that's obviously not the only sort of switch in model type that we want to facilitate and make easier. Um, the rest sort of follows on the tagline more models, same syntax. So even if you want to go to something very different and pick one of the tree-based ones and say, well, I like it. boost a tree for <clears throat> a survival problem, and I'm going to fit that with the mBoost package, then these are the two lines that you need to change. And um, that obviously sort of leads us to the question, <laughs> what is actually available? Um, they're all for that new mode, sensor regression, but um, <clears throat> It's the proportional hazards model that we've seen initially as the semi-parametric ones. The parametric models are in uh, the survival reg uh, function. And then for tree-based, you can have decision trees of different sort of flavors or engines fitting them, um, bag trees, random forest, boosted trees. And that's sort of the collection of models that are available in Sensuit right now. And that concludes the specify and fit part of the models. And let's move on to predicting with these models. And again, a few words about sort of what tiny models already does, and then how we're going to uh, change that or build on that with, for the survival models. Um, we sort of give you a quote unquote tiny models prediction guarantee, which means your predictions will always be in a table, not matrix or vector or array. It's a table. It will always be a table. Um, the column names and types are unsurprising and predictable. And the number of rows in new data and the output are the same. So if you have missing data in there um, that you might not be able to predict on, you just get in an A and it doesn't automatically disappear. So what's that, that's the same. That's the same for censored as it is sort of what you used to in, in the tidy models framework. Um, so what's new? Those are additional prediction types. Uh, the first one that we're going to look at is survival time. So I've taken the first three rows here as a toy data set or a small one that we can predict on. I can just spice things up a little bit. I'm making that first uh, entry for species name. And what you need to predict is the predict function, the model, the new data that you're predicting on, and you need to set the time. Uh, the type. So for survival time, the type is called time, and you get a table back. It has a column, dot pred underscore time. Um, they're typically named dot pred or dot pred underscore the specific type. And because it was three rows that we had originally, it is three rows that we get back, even though one of them is an A. The other important new prediction type uh, that comes with censored <clears throat> is survival probability. So getting that looks very similar. You just set the type to survival, but a survival probability is always calculated at a specific time point. So you need to provide those time points that you want to predict that with the additional time arguments. Here I'm doing that for um, uh, the ages 10, 15, 20, and 30, uh, sorry, 40 years. What do you get back? Is a table, it has a column dot red. Um, and we're sort of we're sticking to the one row in the predict object corresponds to one row in your new data. So three rows here. We obviously had four time points to predict on for everyone. So the uh, this is a nest call nested list column with the little tables inside. Um, you see that there are size four rows, two columns. If we pull one of them out to look at them, uh, we see that the first column is dot time, and that will always be the name. 
gives you a reminder of the time points that you predicted on, and the other column has the prediction in it, dot right underscore survival. Here, that's an A because we couldn't, but for the second one, it has the probabilities. Um, we're not working with uh, surfered objects here for the survival curve, but if you do want to plot them, that should be pretty straightforward. So um, that vector of time points, you can obviously do more than just four in my example. So here I'm doing that sort of over one to 80 years of survival for those dolphins and whales. And <clears throat> then I'm gonna unnest that column so it takes all the tables and puts one underneath the other and makes like a big table of that. And because I want to keep the information of um, which observation this belongs to, I've added in a little mutate statement before adding a factor column called ID. Um, and then that unnested gives us that long tidy data frame that we can then send to ggplot um, and make our visualization of this. So to um, collect the thoughts on prediction, um, you can predict survival time and survival probability for all of the models that are censored. And depending on the engine, you may also get predictions for the hazard, uh, the quantile event time distribution, and the linear predictor if your model has that. So censored is here to provide you with a consistent interface to various survival models. And that consistency applies to both how you specify and fit and how you predict and what you get back with this. And I'd love for you to try it out and give us feedback. Um, best feedback menus are probably GitHub. So sensor.tinymodels.org has like uh, a link out to the GitHub repository, leave an issue there or post on our studio community. And that's my conclusion. Thank you. Thank you very much for the um, presentation. Um, are there plans to add relevant metrics um, to yardstick like the C index? Per plans, that's sort of our next um, step in sort of extending support. Does this handle just um, the the Cox objects, or does it also handle uh, the multi-state objects, since they're different? Yeah, it it does not so far. OK. Um, yeah, if I recall correctly. I haven't looked into this in detail yet, and I think that changes the structure um, of yeah, it does. Put its specifications and um, so no, we haven't like made the framework fle more flexible to accommodate that yet. Okay. Um, so another question. Is there um, a link to the slides? Um, uh, there will be. Um, currently, there is a link out for a very similar version of this. So I gave it our studio conf. Um, that's on my GitHub. And yeah, recording of that talk is also out. So you can <laughs> compare the, okay. the pages, but yeah. <laughs> the heart is the same because uh, the state of the package is the same since last month, so. Any other questions? So uh, what plans or what else are you planning on developing with this? Um, so we do aim to make survival analysis like a first class citizen in uh, tidy models. And um, as was the, the first question, the, the next big step is adding uh, metrics for this, appropriate survival metrics um, that will allow us to sort of set up the tuning bit because obviously no metrics, no tuning. Um, but then we're trying to, like my, my idea of where we're going with this next then is to make the whole workflow smooth. So currently you might have to do a little dance with recipes um, and uh, you need to know how to like unlock the potential of workflows if you want to bind um, preprocessors and, and 
um, <clears throat> models together. Um, but yeah, sort of the big, the big step is the metric and tuning and then making it feel like any other model, um, at least with the same ease in tidy models. Okay, great. Thank you very much.